Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. of the highway patrol is the safeguarding of the public highways for all kinds of carriers, all types of people. On March 23rd, a bus was carrying Ray Summers home from state prison where he had served a sentence for armed robbery, first offense. Unknown to Summers, the bus was being trailed by Frank Brimmer, his ex-partner, who had not been caught in the robbery, and Brimmer's new partner, Sandy Hopak. An anxious wife in the town of Fairlane waited impatiently for a bus bringing her husband home from prison. All right. <sighs> Gee, you look good to me. Well, I, I feel pretty good. Ray Summers had served his time for a first offense burglary. He had been a model prisoner and was now ready, with the help of his wife, Ginny, to start a new life. You're going home, all right. Any way of getting there ahead of them? I can cut around Lexington Boulevard, but we have to step on it. Okay, go ahead and try it. Brimmer's anonymous tip to the patrol had been responsible for Summer's imprisonment. Knowing that Summers had hidden the money before being captured, Brimmer intended to follow him until the hiding place was disclosed. There's a man who knows where there's enough cash to keep you and me for a long time. Brimmer. Yeah? You double-crossed Summers once, and you're about to do it again. Don't try that on me. Why, I... I don't understand what you're talking about. Don't interrupt. I'm clean on that job that you two pulled. And if you try to jip me out of one dollar of that money, the cops are going to get the same anonymous phone call that you gave them on Summers. Look, we're... We're partners in this. That's right. You're calling the shots. But we're partners. Equal partners. Remember that. Okay. Darling, this is your new home. Do you like it? Huh. It's swell. And there's a brand new chair just for you. Go ahead and try it. Well, how is it? Oh, great. You know, I think you've put on a little weight. Oh, a couple of pounds, I guess. I took a few days off from work. Good for you. I thought maybe we could go somewhere. Ray, is something wrong? No. Why? I don't know. You kind of seem a little quiet. Aren't you happy being home? Jenny, for two years I've been thinking and planning what I'd say to you when I came home. Now, all I can say is what I said at the bus stop. I love you. And I love you. Oh, darling, it's been so long since I've seen you. 
It's going to be too easy to trail Summers. He's no fool. Hasn't been too easy to trail his wife. Well, if they start to go, you follow them in your car for a while. And I'll take over my car, and we'll switch back and forth. Smart, huh? Smart. Yeah. Have you been up to the cabin lately? Oh, nearly every weekend. Have we had any more visitors up there? No, not since the first time. Oh, that cabin was such a wreck. But I've got it all fixed up now. It was probably Brimmer. Say, has he ever bothered you? No, I've never seen him. Our old apartment was searched several times, and I suspected it was your Mr. Brimmer. But since I moved here, he doesn't know where I am. And he probably figures he's entitled to half the money. Ray. We're going to have to have a talk about that money. What about it? Honey, you've got to give it back. Give it back? Yes, to the people it belongs to. But I've put in almost five years of hard work and... being locked up in a cage like an animal. And the loneliness. Oh, but honey, you've got to give it back. Ginny, I've paid for stealing that money. Every last cent. Now think what it'll do for us. Ray, I can't live through another period of waiting for you to get out of prison. Well, I don't intend to go back to prison. No one ever does. Well, I can't be tried twice for the same crime. The minute you spend five cents of that money, you're committing another crime. If we're smart, no one will ever know. <sighs> Prisons all over the world are filled with people that thought they were too smart to be caught. Besides, I want an honest man for a husband. It's up to you, Ray. I'd like you to make a choice now. Well, what do we use for money? I can't get a job, don't you realize that? Who do I give for references, the warden? I'm an ex-con. Would you trust an ex-con? Would I? Oh, Jenny, you're my wife. Of course you trust me, but... Outsiders, they... Ray, you've made a mistake. And there will be problems. But we'll face them together. Now, the first one's the money. Where is it? Maybe days before he goes for the money. Relax. If they go, we'll hear them. And we'll follow them. Whenever and wherever they go. First, we'll go to the police. No, no police. I'll give it back to the people I took it from. But they're a hundred miles away. Well, why can't we take a little trip? Well, wonderful. All right, I'll call Mr. Gordon at the lumber company and tell him we're on our way to give him back his money. All right. Okay. Hello, long distance? I want to place a call to Mr. Gordon at the Preston Lumber Company. Yeah, that's right. It's on Highway 24, about four miles south of Waynesburg. Yeah, I'll hold on. Hello? Hello, Mr. Gordon. This is Ray Summers. Yes, Mr. Summers. Ray Summers? Are you the man who... Yes, I'm the man, or rather one of the men, who stole your payroll five years ago. I just got out of prison. Oh, uh, well, where are you now? A hundred miles away. Well, uh, what do you want? I still have the money I stole from you, and I want to return it. All of it? Yes, all of it. We'll be leaving shortly, and we should see you later in the day. Well, thank you, Mr. Summers. We'll be very glad to see you. Uh, put in a long-distance call for Mr. Matthews at Highway Patrol Headquarters. Hurry. Let's pack a few things and make an occasion of it. I bet it's an occasion for Gordon, too. Maybe he'll give you work. Oh, fat chance of that. Well, that's about all there is to it. Uh, he's on his way. That's all he said. Uh... I, I testified against him, Mr. Matthews. I'd, I'd be afraid to meet him. Well, don't worry, Mr. Gordon. I promise nothing will happen to you. Well, if there's anything else I can do... At the moment, no. If there is, we'll call you. Thanks very much. Here's a package on Ray Summers. Well, I've heard everything now. Here's a guy who steals a lot of money. Now he wants to give it back. Was that Gordon on the phone? Yeah. He wants to know what we do in a situation like this. Well, if the guy wants to go straight, we'll back him up. But we've got to protect Mr. Gordon, too. <clears throat> He's afraid Summers is out for revenge, huh? Yeah. He could be right. It's up to us to see he gets the money back. Summers might have other ideas. 
Where is Summers? Fairlane. That's about 100 miles from Lumber Company. Mm, that's a big help. I'll trace the call to Gordon. You call the prison, get all the information you can. We'll tag along just in case. Spathios. headquarters, every effort was being made to get information about Ray Summers and to locate him. Report from the prison. Summers was a model prisoner. He's married and his wife Virginia came to see him every visitor's day. Her address is 224 Burn Avenue, Fairlane. What's the phone number? Digman, 4321. Anything else? No, as far as they know, he was intended to go straight home. Get me at 1128 on Virginia Summers. Right. Fine. No, that's all right. Thanks very much. Mrs. Virginia Summers owns a four-door sedan, Mary Paul Frank, 686. Same address? Same address, 224 Burn Avenue. Well, we're hot. That call to the lumber company was from a phone listed to Virginia Summers. Let's see if I can get him. Get me Digman 4321 right away, will you? You know, it's funny. Summers took a top rap for his first sentence. Because he wouldn't tell who was with him or what he did with the money. I thought the other guy had the money. You know, I could be wrong. Didn't we get Summers on a direct tip-off? Yeah, that's right. An anonymous tip. Gordon identified him. That's why we knew he had a pal. Gordon had seen both of them. We never saw the other guy or the money. What? Oh, thanks very much. They don't answer. That could mean that they've already started for the lumber company. Well, we'll have to pick him up on the road, then. Come here. Here's Fairlane. Here's the lumber company. Here's where we are. What other called all units? Watch for a four-door sedan. Mary Paul Frank 686. If Summers wants to give back the money, let's give him a chance. Okay. I'll tell the units, if they see the car, report it. Don't follow it. Thirty to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. Hardtop coupe, license number Mary Paul Frank, 686, just past me traveling north. Approximate speed, 40 miles an hour. What's your 1020? Call for 1791, 10 miles south of Lane Junction. Stand by. 10 4. Vehicle just past 2830, 10 miles south of Lane Junction, Route 21, 40 miles per hour. Summers has a cabin. Back River Road, north of two. Well, it should take him about 15 minutes to get to the junction. I'll take the undercover car. Keep in touch with me. What about 2830? I'll move ahead just in case. Headquarters to 2830. 2830, bye. Cut through Freedom Dam Pass and rejoin Highway 24 at intersection of Route 31. You should make it ahead of the vehicle under surveillance. Wait there for instruction. 10-4. to the headquarters. Headquarters, bye. Summer's car just passed. I'll tail him. 
2150 to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. There's another car following Summers. Get me an 1128 on license John Robert Frank 654. 104. Ray. Yes? Something's bothering me. What is it? Well, honey, why did you keep all the money? Back at the house, you said Brimmer expected to have half. Just one of those things. You see, Brimmer and I had agreed on a hiding place for the money, but when I got there, the place was covered, and I had to take it up to the cabin. And you didn't let him know? Well, I was picked up before I had a chance. I was on my way to tell him, but instead of Brimmer, I found two cops waiting for me. <laughs> All right. It was now Hopak's turn to pass Brimmer and take up the trailing of Ray Summers. Ready? Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by license number John Robert Frank 654. Registered to Harry Krebs. 56 Rosewood Lane. No such address. What about Krebs? We found that name in the alias file. It's been used by Sandy Hopak, former hatchet man for the Dusty Clipper gang. Well, he could be partner in the mill job. Who's in this area? 1440. He's a half a mile south of you. Have 1440 pick him up on suspicion. I want to talk to him. 10-4? 10-4. Hello, Hopak. Gee, the place looks just like it did five years ago. I've always loved this place. Somehow it seems to be a part of us. I was broken hearted when I came up here and saw it all torn apart. Well, you sure did a swell job putting it back together. I think so. Well, now if I can find a screwdriver, we'll pick up that money and be on our way. All right. Twenty-one fifty to twenty-eight thirty. Twenty-eight thirty by. Summer's past you yet? Negative. I'm going up and check the cabin. If you don't see him, come on up and look for my car. 10-4. Well, if it was Brimmer that ransacked the cabin, he evidently didn't want my screwdriver. 
Didn't the police search the cabin? Yeah. It's funny they didn't find the money. Well, obviously, they didn't look in the right place. Twenty-one fifty to twenty-eight thirty. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. There's a second car here. Get up here, code two. Ten four. Well, there it is. Oh, don't bother with the wall bracket. Let's go and get this money. You won't have to go far, Brimmer. I'll take the money, Ray. Half of that money belongs to me, Ray. Remember, I waited a long time for the money. Now I'll take it all. You didn't serve half the sentence. You don't get any of it, and neither do I. I'm returning this money to the lumber company. What? Oh, I couldn't let you do that. Through some misguided feeling of obligation or honor, my husband didn't inform on you, but I have no such compunctions. If you take that money, I'll tell the police you're one of the men involved in the robbery. Over there. Move. Who's that man? I don't know. I never saw him before. You, Mrs. Summers? I've never seen him either. Get over there. Come in, mister. What's this, a hold-up? Yes, this man was trying to take... Keep quiet, Mrs. Summers. What are you doing here, mister? I'm interested in this cabin. Are the owners here? You, Mr. Summers? How'd you know he was Summers? I heard you call the lady Mrs. Summers. All right, Ray. This place is getting crowded. Let me have the money. I told you, this money's going back to the lumber company. Now look, you're not in any trouble yet. Why don't you clear out of here? Are you going to give me the money, or am I going to fire this three times, starting with the lady? Give him the money. Thanks. Now the car keys. Now yours. Get over there. Now don't any of you stick your nose outside that door until you hear my car start. And the keys. Now you know what I'm doing around here. Yeah, you're not so smart. A few more seconds and I'd have been away. A couple of more seconds, you'd have been shot, too. Take him in. I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Mr. Matthews, Ray had the money hidden in the cabin. We were really on our way to give it to Mr. Gordon. Yeah, I gathered that. Here it is. I don't think you'll steal it or lose it, but do you mind if I tag along the rest of the way? Oh, we'd welcome it. We don't want any more excitement today. You're forgetting Mr. Gordon, aren't you? Oh. Let's go. See the highway patrol in action again next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.